Okay, it's the start of the season and Robinson Labs is back. And we've got a good new product to launch. Now, I must start by apologising and saying I'm sorry to the five people that pre-ordered this item before catastrophe struck. We had a server fire, we had a microchip shortage, and all sorts of things. So, <laughs> we've done it, we're here. Um, so, We'll show you a couple of other competitors' WBOSS modules, including the one that David McLucky reviewed. Uh, when he got to the inside of it, it was potted, and that's that's where that ended. Well, we bought one and took it apart, so you don't have to. And then we'll show you the latest creation, and maybe why you shouldn't use a competitor's. Over to the bench. Okay, over at the bench now, and the first one we'll start with is Orbasto. Now, last year, I bought the rights to our Orbasto um, to take the, shall we say, 35% of intellectual property that was worth it. The rest is junk, and here's the first one. If anybody's got this particular type of box, stop right now. It's time to upgrade. Uh, this is the worst device we've seen, really. Uh, this was a, with a customer and his Thermotop V. He, yeah, he did the polarity job and reversed it backwards. However, I do have a video on that and I did repair the Thermotop V. However, this also took reverse voltage and it didn't make it. And there's a real, real simple reason why. All it needed was one diode to stop the reverse polarity. That's the most simple way. We didn't get one of them. What did you get? Well, you got a nasty DIY circuit, that's for sure. The flux on it is me when I tried to repair it. Also, you don't get a shit hot capacitor like that. That was me. You had two standard capacitors in there, and the resistors here I changed, they were just normal carbon film. So when you look at it, what a piece of dog shit that really is. You must have paid 50 quid plus for it, and it's the nastiest homemade circuit, heavily cut down, I've ever seen. No input protection, no output protection, tracks aren't appropriate, dog shit. And that's the junk that was left from the caps when it went bang. There's the fluff out of one of them there. So, anybody got one of them, they need to get rid straight away. Now, this particular type, the one that David McLucky reviewed, well, we took it apart, so he didn't, or you don't, have to. And thank God we did. Here's your board. See how thin it is? Let's show you up against good quality real circuit board. It's bending. It's, it's got bend gate going on. But look how thin that is. This is standard 1.6mm FR4. It's as thin as a sheet of paper. That doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's very, very cheap. So there's your two LEDs that shine through. Problem is, every single trace goes to a wire. That's a bad design of a circuit board, really. So what does it contain? Get it as best in focus as I can. Well, we'll remove the relay for clarity. I'll take some high quality images for you. But um, 
This has a monumental flaw. Monumental flaw. On the input, it goes down to 500 milliamp fuse. It's a non-resettable fuse. But 500 milliamps for a whole circuit this size is crazy when the circuit only pulls something like 20, 25 milliamps. Uh, with the LEDs, we'll go 30 milliamps just, just for shits and giggles. So a 500 milliamp fuse on the actual um, control circuitry is, is just, it's just nuts. But it gets better, or should I say worse. Now, on the relay output is another 500 milliamp fuse that's also non-resettable. And remember, this is all potted in that box. So the normal client, the normal person with one of these, can't access that. It, it, and you know what makes it even worse? This is the fundamental flaw of somebody who, yeah, all right, they've put a product together, but... They're not exactly a proper electrical design engineer. And you see that from silly things like it starts here, goes all the way around here, goes all the way around there to get to there. What, from here to there, and we've gone all the way around the houses. It's just shit design, really. Um, I mean, they work, but the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate problem is this via here is the power out for the relay. Okay, you say? Well, hmm. <laughs> it made a monumental error. In the power comes in, it goes through the main 500 milliamp fuse, it runs the circuit, but it then spurs off the fuse up to this fuse for the relay. So here's the thing. You'll probably never blow the 500 milliamp fuse here because this one is taking the power of the circuit as well. Guaranteed, it will be the main one that goes, renders the unit absolutely useless as soon as it's potted and you wouldn't be able to get in there to do anything with it. So it would be scrap and you'd need another one for 50 quid. I also don't like the cabling. It's nasty cabling. Shall we uh, check if it's real copper or not? Not that that really matters, it's not carrying high, high current. But nevertheless, so <laughs> if it doesn't burn away, it's copper. If it all shrinks and that, it's copper coated aluminium. Oh, we'll give them it. It is copper. Huh. But it's not proper nice cable. It's soft PVC stuff. It's it's not the proper marine automotive cable. It's it's horribly thin. It's 0.75. Uh, the sheaths on it are horrible. Length. What's the length like? Mm -hmm. 250 mil. Not ideal. Um very small Molex connector. I mean, it is small. That's not a bad thing, but yeah. So what makes ours better? Well, everything really. So what I'll do is I'll just wrap that up and leave it there as, an, as the example and I will show you one more um, which we will cut to now um, and I'll show pictures of that and explain that how crazy that is And the guy wants 45 quid of it. See the little LED sticking out of it? Dog shit. Then he expects you to buy this for 40 quid to plug it in and clear the fault codes. Uh, what's that about? Here's another version of it. It's exactly the same thing, just in a different sleeve. 
here's the inside of it. It's not a bad design. And then the evolution of it with extra pump and that. Now that you've seen why you shouldn't waste your money with that other one, what have we done? Well, a lot. So this is our board. At the minute, it doesn't have the blue module, wireless module that sits here. This, this, this hasn't been built yet, but um, Now you've seen the insides. This is what you'll receive. Try and catch the laser in the light. It's hard to catch the... It's easy to see by the eye, but obviously the camera struggles to pick it up, but there you go, green power, red, active, blue, W bus. It gives you your pin out here and down here. You have your harness connector, real harness connector. USB to turn it into the pass through. This one's not screwed in so we can take the lid off. And that's how you'd access your dip switches. So switch one, supplemental heating, parking heating, switch two, turns the actual relay for the pump on or off so if you're not going to use pump control just leave that off um, they all come preset as parking heater if you have a supplemental heater I suggest you try and run it as it is first if it doesn't want to run then whip the lid off push number one up give it another go and you should be good to go so you get one of them You get one of them. Bearing in mind it's scratchy because it's my test lead. But um, as you can see, you get half a meter of wire. Oh, and uh, it's real wire. Real, real, real wire. Plasticky, proper automotive grade. Nice and chunky compared to this piece of shit. Um, Obviously, I, I'm not using the pump, I just put it out of the way. Yours won't come like that. Yours will come as a complete new new harness. The harness goes clunk into there. Look at that. Nice and solid. Mm, much better. Much, much better. Also, once you have your device, you'll also receive a small USB lead. It's a USB mini. Um, they're very short, but I give you a way to connect. Uh, obviously, most people would want to buy a bit longer lead or whatever, but you get one with it, so that's not too bad. And also, you get a nice remote to use it. So, green is W bus, purple is the pump output. Yellow is plus 12 volts to turn it on or off, or naturally you can use the remote to turn it on and off. So if you add a timer to the yellow wire, it now has a timer of your choice. Obviously, you've always got manual control. Um, I will now give you a small demo of our unit. I will connect it to the machine and give you a quick demo. So, okay, I've connected the harness to power. Here's our harness. So we're connected to power and we're connected to W bus. We're gonna leave the pump, we don't need the pump. So that's that. I'm gonna use an ODA3 board. So, that type, W bus board. So we will fit that. Onto the machine.
and we're wired in as so. Then we take our module. We're connecting our harness and I'm going to sit it just there so that you can see the box properly. We'll power on. And as you see every now and then you get the blue W bus light flashing when it's connecting to the heater. And we press go. Red lights come on so the heat is on. The heat will now start up, do its thing. Obviously the yellow wire 12 volts does exactly the same thing. Bring the remote back in, off. And there you go, it'll now go for its shutdown procedure. Thanks for watching. They're available at the website.